And again, the, the biggest difference between your 2D traditional sonar and your down imaging or your, your clear view, down view, which is what Garmin calls it, is the separation. There's a ton of fish down here. Ton of fish down there. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is designed to cover some basics of down imaging, including how the image is created, where the image is in re relation to the boat, and how to identify fish, rocks, trees, weeds, etc as they appear on the screen. First, let's start with where the image starts on your screen. This comes from your transducer, which can either be mounted on the transom of your boat or the trolling motor. This transducer sends a sonar wave, typically in three different frequencies, 455, 800, or 1.1 or 1.2 megahertz, to the bottom of the lake. The sonar wave hits the bottom of the lake and moves back towards the transducer. Then your graph interprets the time that it took from that sonar wave to hit the bottom of the lake and return to the transducer, coming up with a depth. So we have a basic understanding of how the sonar wave actually creates a depth image. Let's talk about what you're actually seeing on your screen. On the screen, you're gonna see a blacked out area above a dark gold area. Now the dark gold area depends on what color palette you have, which I'll discuss here in the settings section of the video. But the blacked out area of the screen shows the entire water column from the surface of the water all the way to the lake bottom. The lake bottom is illustrated by the dark gold and anything on the lake bottom is illustrated by dark gold, either bumps or shadows, which we're gonna talk about later. Now the transducer, which is located at the top right of the screen, will ping off the lake bottom and other objects to create different depths and different images. This data is gonna move from right to left across the screen, which creates historical data. Now, any image on the very right side of the screen will show up directly below the boat. As the image moves from right to left of the screen, the image is considered further behind the transducer only if the boat is moving. If you're sitting still in the water, the image will still move from right to left across the screen. However, you will notice that the images become more elongated and almost become straight lines, similar to what we saw in the 2D sonar video. This is because the transducer sends and receives the sonar beam. Because the boat's not moving, it's getting the same exact data, creating a straight or elongated line. It's gonna look elongated like that. See how it's kind of these wavy lines? Normally, if you were trolling, it looked like a straight line and it'd drop off real quick because these brush piles, again, are only four or five, maybe six feet long at the, at the longest. But these are fish stacked up above it. Speaking of putting fish in the boat, what happens when you catch a really big fish and you find out your camera battery or your phone battery is low? In my case, I always keep a wireless power bank. That's why this video is sponsored by The Ridge. Now, like I said, this is a wireless power bank. You can set your phone or any other wireless charging device right on top of it. It will start charging it, no cables necessary. It's also got three different USB ports. It's got a regular USB, a USB-C, and a lightning port charger for any phone or camera device that's compatible with those plugins. For me, I also use it to charge up and power my GoPros. It gives me about two hours of runtime when I'm filming on the water. Plenty of time for you to catch a really nice fish, get some great footage, and also be sure your phone or camera still has enough battery juice to take that nice picture. Be sure to go to ridge.com forward slash Davis and use promo code DAVIS, that is D-A-V-I-S, all caps, and you're gonna get 15% off this charger. Huge thank you to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to finding fish. One of the most common questions I get about down imaging or just sonar in general is how far away an object is once you see it on your screen. Now this can be a little bit tricky because you need to know the speed and the direction your boat is going to determine the exact distance of the object. The best way that I know how to actually find the position is to use a waypoint. After marking the waypoint on your graph, simply by going over it with your toggle key, or if you got a touch screen, tapping on the image, create the waypoint. You're gonna circle back slowly, either idle over it with your outboard or with your trolling motor if you're fishing a brush pile in this case, which is what we're trying to do here. Try not to scare the fish. And then you're gonna throw a buoy marker on in this case, the brush pile. Now, typically in this situation, it is a benefit to have the transducer on a trolling motor as well as a transom, because you can quietly idle over the brush pile near your buoy marker that you just threw out 
to get a more accurate reading of where you are at in relation to the brush pile. Once that brush pile starts showing up on the very far right side of the screen, that's how you know you're directly over the top of it. And you can adjust your buoy marker to get a more accurate setting so that you can cast your jig over the top and catch the crappie. Now, if you don't have a second transducer on the trolling motor, it's not that big a deal. It's just gonna be a little bit more tedious using the transducer mounted on the transom, slowly idle around that brush pile until you finally mark it right below uh, the boat, which again is on the far right side of the screen, and you can adjust the buoy marker to make a more accurate toss. It also helps to have a second buoy marker. Now I understand that some of you really wanted a mathematical breakdown of, well, if I scroll over here using a, a toggle key, it'll show me I am 250 feet you know, from this object. Yes and no. Uh, I find the most accurate way to do this is actually just use a buoy marker. And with the buoy marker, you actually can see where you're trying to cast, which is gonna help you catch more fish in the long run rather than trying to stare at a sonar screen and guess which direction your waypoint is in relation to your boat on the mapping system. So now we've talked about what the transducer does and how it receives a signal or the depth. We've talked about what you're basically seeing on the screen as far as what the water surface is, what the lake bottom is, and what the black surface area is, which is the entire water column. And we talked about how to actually mark waypoints with our down imaging. As I'm filming this, this is June. We're getting into the summertime fishing pattern for these crappie, so brush piles are going to be key. So let's talk about settings that I use for down imaging in order to find brush piles that are loaded with crappie. All right, so the first thing you wanna do with your down imaging, and this is what I talked about in the 2D traditional sonar video, is if you set your range, um, I like to set it mine to 30 feet. Fishing shallower than 30 feet, you can just set it on auto, but there is a pile of fish and this is a brush pile. So the first thing is to set the range. Two adjustments I, I like to make um, on my contrast, I, I tend to put my contrast a little bit higher because I'm, I'm fishing for panfish. So the next thing I would like to do is adjust the brightness. Um, you can see if you bring the brightness down, it does help a little bit with definition and shadows, but since we, uh, we're going after panfish again, I leave, them, leave that brightness as high as possible. Kind of pick out those smaller fish on brush piles or weed edges. So another thing that I, I would highly recommend, get used to one shade of palette. So I, I go with the orange crawfish because um, this is very similar to the hummingbird units. Now the, the main key you use down imaging versus 2D is because it allows you for some separation. I'm gonna screenshot this here. You can actually see the individual logs and in the brush pile versus, there's another one. Let's, let's go to, uh, I'm gonna show you this real quick. So here's, here's what your 2D sonar would look like on the same setup. See how it's all kind of blurred in with red? Now you can definitely tell something's there. But when we go to our down imaging screen, you can see the individual fish, and those are a ton of crappie stacked up on that brush pile. I'm gonna screenshot that again for you. And that is the main key why you use down imaging sonar versus 2D sonar. So if you have a unit that has both down imaging and 2D, you can use them side by side, kind of like I have them here. Now this unit has side imaging, so I also have side imaging hooked up, but you could have a screen like this and you can see there's definitely something down there. And then you can definitely tell the high definition of these are fish, those are the brush pile. And uh, yeah, there's definitely a ton of fish down there. Now, as far as, let's say sonar setup goes, my scroll speed, I set at five. I know I did a kind of a video on the hummingbird about that a while back. I usually set this one or two miles faster than what I troll. So that is a quick rundown of how down imaging works, my settings that I use to find crappie during the summertime. Hopefully you can put some of this info to good use this summer, catch a bunch of fish. Huge thanks again to The Ridge for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out ridge.com forward slash Davis. Pick up a power bank charger. Make sure your phone doesn't die when you catch a big fish. You can actually take a picture of it. Use promo code Davis to get 15% off as well. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to post any comments or questions in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Good luck on the water this summer.